Derek, that honey's a big hit. Ah, beautiful. Hello tonight. This is CJ, Brad, Derek. This is the Rockwire. What I have for you tonight is thrash metal heaven. He's your thrash, if you will. Harry King, Anvil, Accept, and a special little treat from the new Bruce Dickinson from the Whiskey. Is that me? And we got it halfway right. Kerry King actually built a killer lineup. He got Kyle Sanders from Hell Yeah to play bass, who is probably the least known person on the band. Also, I guess he kept Paul Bostaff because he used to be the drummer for Slayer, but he recruited Phil Demel, the guitar player for Violence and Machine Head, and also somehow he convinced Mark Osegueda to be the singer for this band, who is also, of course, the vocalist for Death Angel. So yeah, a pretty cool lineup. So yeah, just being into metal, even though I don't really particularly love all of these bands, you know you would at least get a good product, and that we did. Now, of course, Kerry King, after bashing his old bandmates, he's got to put his money where his mouth is. I mean, seriously, he just recently said that he had to record all of Slayer's bass because Tom Araya couldn't record his own bass parts. And of course, more shockingly, he said that Dave Lombardo is dead to him. So yeah, now he has to impress the fuck out of us. And now... I <laughs> all God. right. What is it with guitarists always talking shit about bass players? <laughs> bass players don't get any respect. Now, we, we've had the first Kerry King, the Idle Hands. We all liked Idle Hands, right? I believe so. Yes, yeah, classic, classic Slayer. This new band sounds like Slayer. Let's hear it. Spoiler alert. Ooh. So they're keeping the satanic vibe going. That is the new Harry King's for model from Dean. About $6,500 if you want one. It's heavy as hell, isn't it? All right, I gotta be the first asshole tonight. I feel like he's reciting his grocery list with his wife over the phone, and she's having a hard time hearing him. I disagree. <laughs> you don't like the sound of his vocals? I'm just saying the game stuff. Okay, right here. Ooh. I 
right. So we got lots of fire. We got a burning pentagram. Derek, what do you think about Mark's vocals? I agree to Tom. No, I agree. I think his vocals are, I kind of, I think I like him. He's from death angel, isn't he? I like death angel. Uh, but I understand what uh, Brad's talking about, like kind of the cadence. Yeah, it's kind of da da. I wish it was maybe a little bit different. I can see that. I like yeah. it. I thought it was fine. Brad, did you see that Jackson Kelly in there? A little two tone for you. What do you think about Carrie's guitar solo on this one? I, I thought you know I, it wasn't too bad. Um, there it was a little blended where they had a little harmonizing. I, I like kind of like that. I thought he, I thought he struggled, but dude, but he I don't played know, man. The lots of one. screaming, lots of fire, heavy as fuck. I dug it. So it, here's a little bit of uh, Harry King talking with uh, Loudwire about the five shows he was in Megadeth. In 1984, you joined uh, Dave Mustaine's new band, Megadeth. Uh, Jeff was worried about your decision, and while Mustaine wanted you to play on a permanent basis, you left Megadeth after playing five concerts. I did play Megadeth's first five shows. First five shows, all right. Um, and that being said, I was one of the lucky people, and there's certainly no offense against Kirk Hammett. Kirk's a wonderful friend of mine, but I was lucky enough to see Metallica with Mustaine. And I say that because it's just a rare thing to be able to say that. Um, I saw them. I saw them play at the Woodstock, and I was so intrigued by Mustaine because he was just ripping on guitar and looking out that way somewhere. And I'm like, I can't do that to this fucking day, you know. So I was just blown away at, at his guitar playing. And then to find out, I think it was through BC Rich because we all played BC Rich back then. I think it was through BC Rich I found out that that Dave was inquiring if I would play. And at the end of the day, I thought. This is a gigantic learning situation, you know? And it, I also thought, you know, people would see me and know me from Slayer, because I mean, we only went to the Bay Area, you yeah. know? That's still when we only got up there. So I think if people saw me, they would, it would at least make them think Slayer. So I had Slayer's best intentions in mind. I didn't go mm-hmm. and say, hey, I'm gonna be in Megadeth. You know, I, don't, I don't know how anybody can be in Megadeth for more than a couple hours, because that guy's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Any person? <laughs> any personal experience? Only five shows? Any, First any, five. Any weird experiences with him in those five shows or just we know he was, that the he was cooler been... he was cooler back then. Oh. Um, weren't we all I think there's been a lot of drugs and, and funny extracurriculars between now and then that helped shape who he is today. But um it was good times back then. Um playing all the venues Slayer played and and just I don't know, playing different music. His stuff is definitely more, I don't say intricate, because we got intricate parts too, but it's just, he writes riffs in a very different perspective. And I, even after playing with him for a number of months, it's still, I wouldn't do it. It's just not my style. Gotcha. Um, It said that the split, when you did leave Megadeth, it caused a rift between yourself and Dave Mustaine, which evolved into a long running feud between Megadeth and Slayer. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Who doesn't Dave Mustaine feud with? Right. I would love to lock Dave Mustaine and Sebastian Bach in a room together. Oh, and God. See what would happen. Dave Mustaine's coming out of their life. They no, could be Sebastian. No. Harry King, to me, comes off like a dick in a yeah. lot of interviews. But I've actually decided I'm wrong. Because I appreciate his honesty. And he's a fucking great quote. He's a great interview. And when he sold his soul to the devil for Slayer, he obviously asked for the fountain of youth. Because dude looks fucking great. Brad, your thoughts on Kerry King before we move on? Well, you know, I never really appreciated Slayer. Yeah, I listened to him, but I didn't really... I thought always thought they were... A, like a seven or eight on the thrash metal chart. And they're in the top four is what most people consider. So I'm, I'm kind of impressed. And especially hearing that interview, 
I actually have more of an appreciation. He's a solid guitarist. He's not a ripper. Anything to add, Derek? From the interview, you want to move him up. I mean, that's not musically. You want to move? No, him no, up, I'm, I'm, so no. I'm not. I'm still not moving weird. Slayer up. I'm not moving oh, okay. Slayer up. I'm saying that I'm impressed with him. Okay. No, can't wait to hear some more music from him. Cool. The the first song was awesome. If you were going to do your thing. big four, obviously Megadeth and Metallica are one and two. Who, who's, who's in if you took Slayer out? I know. Testament, testament, testament. Ooh. Brad? I, th- I think Anthrax. No. They well, already are in it. They already are in. In the top four? Yeah. You didn't, in the you didn't say him. You didn't say him. No. Wow. He said two. He gave us two. I'm giving you Anthrax. No, Anthrax is already in there. So it's Anthrax, Megadeth, and never and, mind. Uh, and, uh, never mind. Sh- <laughs> shut up. Testament. Testament. All, all right. This is uh this is a little in your... a new interview with Australia Scars and oh Guitars boy. Podcast. Udo. I mean former Accept singer Udo Dirkschnader was asked if he has had any contact with Accept's guitarist Wolf Hoffman in recent years. He responded. Never. And I don't want, and then I don't want to have any contact with him. It's a different story, you know, but uh, I'm really good friend now again with, uh, or still with Peter Baltus. Yeah. He did all the bass guitars on, on, on this cover album, for example. Um, I still have good relationship with, uh, 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 with Stefan Kaufmann. I mean, all over the years, he wanted to was the guitar player in UDO, you know, I, he was producing with UDO and stuff like that. Mm. And um, yeah, uh, the only guy I don't want to talk to, let's say in this way, is Wolf. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why, but uh, this is, uh, <laughs> okay. Every- so if you're waiting for the Udo reunion, ain't happening. Can I say um, one thing? Yes. The Balls to the Wall album cover is one of the gayest looking album covers I've ever seen in my life. I was going to make a Rob Helfer comment because they, uh, he, that's who, he reminds me of Rob Helfer. I didn't his, realize his old how haircut. small he is. To hear him <laughs> talk, I can't believe that's the guy who sings Balls to the Walls. Anyway, the new Accept. Without you. Ooh, ooh. I like this riff. Dang. Why is Slat or Thrash song so long?
Udo who I I fucking love this song. So Wolf yeah. is the only original member of the band anymore. Well, know, if, you're, if, if you're an Accept fan, you liked him back in the day. You have to. Well, I don't know. Are you? Are, do you love Udo so much that you can't get down with this new version? But I think they're better than they were back then. Brad, have you I ever saw Accept? No. Derek? No. No. Do they tour a lot? Do you know? I have not ever saw Probably not Accept in the States. Either. So it, here, here's a little cut from the metal voice where the new singer, the new Udo, Mark, is talking about them not touring in America. But oh. North America is going to get a few dates. So if you ever want to see them, this is probably your last shot. So, so. as you're clarifying, as you're saying, Mark's a new singer. He's joined the band in 2009. Well, yeah, I know. Well. <laughs> he's not, no, he's a no, new old God. singer. No, that that's actually important. That that's a good uh, quality clarification. Good but job. listen, man, you think except you think balls the walls. It's not Udo. Right. Mark's here. I, I actually think he's better. Let's hear from the man. I think Mark's balding. That's why he always wears a hat. You'd have to call an ambulance. What has always been your challenges to tour the U.S.? Wolf is based in the U.S. You're based in the U.S. You would think it'd be that much easier, right, to 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 tour you the would. U.S. You would. It's just we don't have that kind of following in the U.S. that we have everywhere else in the world. So, uh, you know, the money's not there. It's it's wow. it's rough, wow. but we are I we are going to make a run this year, and uh, we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, that's what we were wondering. We if there was any yet, but it, it is in the works. Okay, so North America or yes. just U.S. Uh, North America. Okay, good. good. So, so U.S. and Montreal <laughs> or Toronto or Toronto. <laughs> I have not seen the final schedule yet, so I'm not at liberty okay. to say okay. anything. And none of that's been in, in, announced, so I got you. We, we, right. We'll play that by ear. Right now, we're working. You know, we have South America uh, in May, 
uh, summer festivals in Europe and a European headline tour starting in October. So somewhere between the summer festivals and October, we should be doing a U.S. run. Okay. Right. And, Why do the South Americans get heavy fucking metal more than the United States? They support it. They're not I, listening to all this pop shit. It, you you wonder if it is what we're fed. All right, so oh, it, it's got to be. I mean, so here here's a uh, here's Steve Kudrow lips from Anvil. He is talking about uh just make making records and uh just fucking driving on rock and roll forever. Also, the metal voice, great great show by the way. You've been keeping the old the geezer metal relevant maybe there's another <laughs> album or two but but what i generally mean the way we were i mean the uh, metal on metal was my second album right, right. i'm just generally saying the beginning of the my only career, hit metal on metal. i'm fucking 67 dude i got i got heart <laughs> i got heart problems i don't know how much longer i got you know what i mean <laughs> it, 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 life has a beginning middle good. and end that's the way it works for everybody no one gets out alive <laughs> no exception so, you know, speaking back then, Forge and Fire released in '83. Are you gonna do any of these 50th anniversary or 40th anniversary tours? I should say, like a lot of bands, where they just play a lot of songs off of that album. Because no, because Anvil stayed relevant, and we put out albums every couple of years for 45 years. Yeah. Why am I celebrating something that happened in '83 when I've got to promote what I'm doing now? Doesn't make sense. I think it makes perfect we, sense. We, no sense to me. Great point. Can we ex expect new songs yeah. at this point? And the audience that we are drawing in this day and age don't even barely know that shit. <laughs> that's true. I've seen that at the last concert here in Montreal. That's what it was. Oh, a lot of younger all young people, man. They what do they know? They know what we've done recently in recent years since the movie. It's actually, it's it's remarkable. It's 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 it's. Uh, it's unique to Anvil. It's not like that for everybody, because not everybody had a documentary that did that well. It's just the way it, it's just the way that the, the it played itself out. Here's the new hey. one from Anvil. Go ahead, Derek. I was just gonna say real quick, Anvil. The story of Anvil is a documentary about Anvil. It's from 2008. You should watch it. It's really really good. You can watch it on YouTube Video, Hulu, Sling. Amazon Prime, Paramount, watch it. I got the trailer for it coming up after this. So here's here's the new one. Let's roll it. Oh, Anvil is a three piece. Yes. This video reminds me of the uh, AC Thunderstruck set. No, it's the um. Oh, I like it already. Hey, CJ, can you turn it up? Fantasy, 
what it's got to be. Need your fantasy. Need your fantasy, what it's got to be. Need your fantasy. performance all right um if you never saw the mu the movie derek referenced it here's the trailer watch it butthole they're a great band yeah i always liked Andrew. in the summer of 1984 anvil toured the world with the biggest bands in rock these guys are going to turn the music world upside down. All of them sold millions of records around the world. All of them, but one. <laughs> one thing that's really good now is that we found those sleeping bags. This is where we yeah. learned how to play. Yeah. We're like brothers. We were just innocent kids. We didn't really know what we were doing. Crappy productions. Crappy management. My name is Tiziana Rigoni, manager at Anvil. It looks like she's booked us a tour. England, Belgium, Germany. This is going to be the biggest tour I've done in 20 years. When I look at Choice Children's Catering, they don't know that my band even exists. Welcome to Romania. The place <laughs> is jam-packed. Given your reputation, you should be playing in front of a thousand people every night. And you are not. I missed our train. It's so unprofessional what we are going through. Who's the guy that's supposed to paint it? It's been nothing but a nightmare. It's over. It's been over for a long time. It's so unfair to handle. It's so unfair to handle. I stay dedicated to what? Rob, I don't want to fight with you. Who's the closest person I got in the world? I started out with Rob when I was 14 years old, and we said, we're going to do it till we're old men really meant that they should have made it a lot bigger i think even he knows at the end of the day the family is what's important i always believe that no matter how hard it gets there's always a way let's show the world that they're wrong we're gonna do it together we're gonna get there we're gonna be rock stars it's a dream but i'm gonna make it come true So so good. When I when I saw Anvil, I actually saw them on the documentary tour, and the way they did it is, it was probably about a seven eight hundred person club, fucking fucking sold out too. You 
it was a, it was a tough ticket because it was small, but it was a tough ticket. So you you go in, you know, you get your drinks, you're mingling at the bar, and they show the fucking movie. And as the credits roll, the screen comes up, and bam, Anvil's on stage, and really? they're rocking for their concert. And it That's it, cool. it was so cool and. They're so fucking likable, and it's one of the best rock docs ever. Anything so you, you saw add, then. yeah. Anything you want to add, Brad? Yeah, that video where you were saying it was like ACDC, Sam Kinison, Wild Thing. That's what that setup was like. No, you know, I, you know, I appreciate really that that song was actually pretty good. It had a good groove to it. I it could have been a minute, probably shorter, but maybe, it had a maybe, good groove. I like maybe, maybe maybe throwing another line or two into the uh, chorus yeah. and the lyrics. Couple more but, guitar fills, but but uh, whatever, I, dude. I, I'm not I'm not fucking ripping those guys. No, I got that a ba- spot. That my bass heart. player had better teeth than you did. See, <laughs> well, there 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 was a there was an ice cream cone incident that fucked up my perfect braces line. Anyway, so Bruce Dickinson. The first show, uh, first time he's performed solo since like 2012 at the Whiskey. Check it out. This This is accident accident of birth. Probably his best solo album. Either that or Tattooed Millionaire. Take your pick. Diner. Like tattooed millionaire. Too long without sleep to continue his journey. Now he on the set list, the of a craft no galaxy. tattooed millionaire, but he did do a cover of Edgar Winter's Frankenstein, which I think is a big oversight. But obviously, home. Bruce does not Somehow want to play a disbelieving world. Tattooed the millionaire has already begun. Because God knows everyone wants to hear it. He's an artist, CJ. You wouldn't understand. I'm not going to question the rock god. Oh, Brad. There's a key tar. No, let's watch and see if we can figure out A, how the fuck a key tar guitar works and how hot this bass player is. <laughs> This is not exactly. Is the video like... coming any clearer? Yeah, no, it's whiskey a go go probably. Oh, oh, it does. Not exactly like running out on stage at Donington. Are we fucking Like her sock stockings. Yes, I could care, Brad. I can remember seeing video screens at the whiskey. We're cutting this one tight, aren't we? Thank you. 
that keyboard is following the bass riffs. Well, now he's not, but he was. Is that guitarist? Is he from Kaja Gugu? The Thompson Twins? He actually has like a guitar solo. I don't know if we're gonna actually get to see it because I ran out of time. Too much yakking. Brad. It wasn't me. <laughs> oh wait. Here it comes. Oh shit. Rock that key tarp, baby. He's following the guitar patterns. He's not playing a solo. Just wait, Brad. Oh. Hey, that's the rock wire. If you made it this long, subscribe. This, this build-up is killing me. It's probably a good thing it's gonna end before anybody has to be suffering through this guitar solo. Run away, run away. Oh. He is so tapping those keys. That's the rock wire. See ya. <laughs> he said that like three times now. Can you get one more in? This is yeah. Derek. See ya. Man, rock on, my fellow rockers. Those are nice stuff.